can't hurt. Uh, actually, my smudge got it. Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, this is Natick High School home of the Red Hawks today. The Brockton Boxers come to town feeling very, very confident. They put up a 42-point gem against the Lexington Minutemen last week at home. The Red Hawks wearing their home red jerseys, white trim, red N on the forehead. The Boxers in their brand new road white jerseys with maroon and black trim, maroon numbers, and of course the maroon helmet with the boxer decal on the side. As always, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, excellent game put up last week by the boxers. What do they have to do to keep the momentum going as Natick, who received the opening kickoff, is approaching midfield. Yeah, basically, Matt, what they have to do is do what they did last week. Con most important thing is to control the offense and defensive lines push Natick around, get him tired. Hopefully by the third quarter, they'll be wore out because Brockton's current is um, fortunate enough to have some big guys out there on the line on both sides of the ball. Well, leading the pack for the boxers last week was Derek Williams. He had four touchdowns in that effort against the Minutemen. Looking to keep the momentum going with Michael Norman under center. So the Red Hawks, who again received the opening kickoff, started at their own one yard line before they busted a few big plays open. Their quarterback is William Lederman, the sophomore quarterback back to pass. He's in trouble, rolls out to the near side, looking to throw across his body. He's got his man number nine, and it's right through his hands. It would have been a touchdown for Max Ferrucci if he closed his hands. Yeah, he definitely blew that one. He somehow broke away from the defender, number two for Ron. Brockton had it right there in his hands and he, and he missed the opportunity. And so that brings up a third and about 11 for the Red Hawks. David Belsius in coverage on that one. There wasn't much coverage to be had, but some things, sometimes things fall your way. Yep, he had him covered up to a point and somehow Darius made the misplay and the receiver was able to get open. All right, Peterman back to pass. He's hit and thrown to the ground. It's going to be fourth and a very, very long 20 yards or thereabouts for the Red Hawks, and they immediately send out their punting team. Yeah, that was a nice play by the Brockton defense. There was about five players that collapsed that pocket and just um, handed the uh, Natick team a sack. That's the sophomore inexperience for Lederman, who had nowhere to go and 
just didn't throw it away while he was being spun to the ground and now back to punt. High snap and almost a block punt. Might have tipped it as it is received at the 50 yard line. Why wasn't there a reception or a run back? That's my question. They immediately whistled it dead. Yeah, I think he, he number 21 for Brockton gave the uh, fair catch signal. And that is Marquis Dos Santos. And we'll have the first look of the night at Michael Norman Jr. and the Brockton Boxer offense, a high powered offense. 311 yards on 41 carries last week. And 21 first downs, seven of nine passing for 109 yards for the Boxers. Yeah, and they Bob. immediately start with the three receiver set. They give to number 17. That's Akeem Watterson who's got a lane and he finds the end zone on the first play of the game for the Boxers offense. And with 7.42 in the first quarter, the Boxers pick up right where they left off. Yeah, that was just great ball running, great um, offensive blocking on uh, the Boxers part. And my man, I'm 17, just took it to the house. Hakeem Watterson, the senior, who was not on the score sheet last week. Starting things early here tonight. Now Carlin's Gina with six for six extra points in the opening game. Lines up, this one is wide to the left. His first miss in the season, wide right. So it's six to nothing, 7.42 to go into the first quarter. The second game of this young season. Carlin Sheen missing his first extra point this year. Yeah, and that's uncharacteristic for uh, him. He, like you said, he's been perfect so far, but he's only human and he's still young and learning. Six for six last week, putting up a touchdown by himself against the Lexington Minutemen. Brockton's offensive line in that first play, they executed all their blocks, made an open field for Watterson after he got through his blocks. And basically you saw the speed of Watterson. Max Ferrucci back to receive for the Red Hawks. Of course, they haven't been the Red Hawks for long, only about seven or eight years. More on that later. Carlin Jean approaches the ball, high end over end kick, and Ferrucci catches this one right at the 10 yard line and then heads up field. He finds a lane, goes to the middle of the field. Ferrucci has a lane and Carlin Jean's the lone man he's got to beat now cutting out wide and he will be run out of bounds. Max Ferrucci with a gem of a run back and that sets up the Red Hawks in excellent position. Yeah, he waited for his blocks to form, headed downfield, watched what was going on, and somehow slipped his way through those Brock defenders and put on some really nice speed to get a big, big play right there on the kickoff return. And Ferrucci proving to us and the fans that he did not let that first uh, drive drop get to his head. And now it is William Lederman again, the sophomore quarterback who had a horrendous first drive. Back in the shotgun with four receivers. Lederman hands off to number four. He's trying to turn the corner. Does so with limited success. Jalen Aponte, another sophomore, cracking the starting lineup for the Red Hawks. Yeah, that was a nice pursuit by that offensive um, side, excuse me, that right side of that defense. Only a couple yards on that play. Second and about eight to go for the Red Hawks. Three receivers, two to the near side. Lederman back to pass. Looking long over the middle for Ferrucci, and it falls incomplete, overthrown just a touch for Lederman. 
Yeah, if he was, he had a step on his defender. If the quarterback could have got that in there, there was a possibility that it could have been a touchdown. Nice coverage, though, by um, Brockton's defensive backfield. Same formation, this time trips to the near side for the Red Hawks. Lederman in the gun, flanked by Gio DeJesus. Immediate whistles, flags thrown. Yeah, that was the right tackle there, number 73 for Nadek. He moved. Jacoby Holiday. Yeah, that was him. Jumping just a bit early. And you can tell he's got his head down in disgust. And he knows. He committed that offense. Again, trips to the near side. In the slot position is Ferrucci. Lederman in the gun. Drops back. He's immediately pressured. And now rolling out to the near side. Lederman turning upfield. Tucks the ball away. Headed for the end zone. No sort kind yet. And he's got a touchdown. Lederman. Excellent awareness to find that lane and tiptoe along the sideline to get to the pylon. Yeah, he did a nice job rolling out. Had a lot of pressure on him. Kind of gave a little tiny little fake like he was going to throw it downfield. Didn't like he did a nice nifty run right up the sidelines there. It kind of reminded me of an old school quarterback, Roger the Dodger, Ron Staubach for the Dallas Cowboys back in the uh, 70s. The extra point kick is up, and the kick is good. So Natick takes the lead 7-6 to six with 6.35 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, nice job, um, Natick, rebounding from Brockton's score and now having a great first um, possession. Comes back with their second possession and gets seven points. We can see Natick has some speed on the offense. Their quarterback, very nifty and speedy runner. But Natick, if Natick wants to hang with Brockton, they cannot let Brockton get big plays. I mean, the first offensive play and Brockton scores a touchdown, Natick's defense is gonna have to improve in that category. Back to receive a Johnny Horn and Watterson who had the opening touchdown for the boxers. But short kick is taken by the number 21 for the boxers. That, of course, is Marquis Dos Santos' second return of the game. Natick's defense has to settle down right now. They know they came out there and gave up a quick touchdown. They're going to have to uh, concentrate a little bit more, be a little bit more tougher take on this uh, boxer team. So I was semi mistaken when I said the Red Hawks have been the Red Hawks for seven or eight years. In 2007, the Natick School Committee banished the Redmond name, branding it offensive to Native Americans. They went under the red and blue. They were called the Natick Red and Blue until October 11th of 2017 when they became the Red Hawks. I like that, the Red Hawks. Which brings me to a bigger issue, which I'll get to end of the quarter or something, about teams such as the North Quincy Red Raiders the Dartmouth Indians, the Braintree Wampanoags, 
Norman handing off to, I believe that's Williams. All right, so Johnny Horn on the carry, busting ahead for a gain of about seven. It'll be second and a long three for the boxers. Nice carry by there, but there by uh, Horn. Horn last week, 13 carries for 69 yards. Nothing to cough at, but when you put him next to Derek Williams, the second, 19 carries, 174 yards, and four touchdowns. Yeah, you could say Horn had a productive day when he touched that football. High formation for the boxers. Norman under center. The give to a Johnny Horn, who has a first down, a few insurance yards. Approaching the 45, he is marked down at the 44-yard line. Yeah, boxes offense moving down the field very nicely so far on running plays. And of course, you know Coach Colombo setting up the native defense for a pass sooner or later. Last week I was shocked is the only way it worked to, de to uh, describe it. Michael Norman was set loose. I mean, 79 yards for uh, Isaiah Laguerre, who's the boxer's number one receiver, and now a pitch to Horn, who stays on his feet and gets across the 50 to the 49 of the Red Hawks. Yeah, nice balance running by the by the tailback. Horn kept his balance and got close to a first down, maybe a couple of, a couple of yards short. The boxers with a perhaps first in its history by week next week as the Natick defense can't become set. Now the give to Horn who's gonna be close to a first down. It all depends on spot. Yeah, it looks like they might be a half yard short. Oh, that was Derek Williams on the carry. Looks like Brockton's offense is going to that quick count offense. No huddle. Third and one, Norman under center. I formation, a wide out split to each side, and Natick's gonna burn a timeout here. Yeah, that, that was a good play by Colombo. He caught, caught Natick's defense off guard, and they weren't quite ready for that uh, third and short play. A good timeout by Natick's uh, coach. Well, for fear of offending somebody that may or may not be watching, I'll shy away from using the term explosive, but as Derek Williams got his first carry of the game on the last play, describe his performance last week. Unbelievable. It was very, very productive. Nice um, nice play all around for the um, Brockton High player. Of course, not to make jokes about the situation in the Merrimack Valley, but when the opportunity presents itself, you got to throw in that word. High formation, third in about three quarters of a yard, and now the offensive line shifts, as does the Natick defense, who look off guard and almost jumping was the lineman on the right side. They give to Williams. He's hit in the backfield and swallowed up. It's going to be fourth and about two and a half to go for the boxers. Yeah, that was a nice job by number big 76, Matt, for Natick. He came right through that line and got the Brock to run him before he could take two steps towards the um, first down marker. Josh Atwood, the junior off, uh, offensive and defensive lineman, one of those two-way players. If we're ever silent for a few minutes, it's because we are positioned directly next to the Nittig marching band, who is quite the interesting looking conductor. It is a Red Hawk that is conducting the marching band. Fourth and two split formation with a couple of receivers to the near side, and I think Natick's going to burn another time out here. They do. So the Red Hawks, very aware that this is a big drive They're very in the long-term message of this game. It's unfortunate they had, they've called two timeouts within the last two minutes. 
of this football game, and we're not even through with the first quarter yet. Brockton's uh, offense has kind of been throwing off the defense with this quick count. Isaiah Laguerre, the guy to watch, positioned as the slot man on the near hash mark. Norman under center, and Derek Williams is the lone man in the backfield. They give to Williams right up the gut. He's got a first down and more plowing ahead all the way to the 40-yard line of the Red Hawks. They got about seven or eight more yards than he needed, putting an explanation point on that set of downs. Yeah, what happened there? The line opened up a hole for him. He went through the hole, hit the linebackers and everything. They bounced off of him, kept going. Finally, the defensive backfield was able, was able to hold on and take him down. Nice play by um, Derek Williams. Same formation. Trips to the far side now. Laguerre, the man in motion. Williams, the lone man behind Norman, who is under center. Norman, quarterback keeper, right up the gut. And he plows ahead for a gain of give or take four yards. Yeah, Coach Colombo likes to call that play every so often. Been doing it for years. When, um, the Brady special. Yeah, yeah. The second the quarterback gets his hands on the ball, Everybody just full steam ahead. Exactly. Doesn't matter if there's someone in your way, bowl them over. Exactly. Brockton doing a nice job controlling this clock on this drive. A buck 20 to go in the first quarter. 7-6 Red Hawks on top of the boxers, but Brockton is charging. Williams in the backfield. Laguerre, the lone receiver in motion. He gets the end around handoff. And he is hit by a committee of Red Hawks. I think there was only one Red Hawk on the field that was not in on that tackle. Yeah, the Red Hawks defense was ready for that um, end around. It did not fool the uh, Natick defense. 50 seconds to go and counting in the first quarter. It's third and about six to go for the high-powered boxer offense who went a total of 420 yards on 50 plays last week. That's a lot of offense. Norman back to pass, looking long. He's going to underthrow it a bit, but received by number 81. That is Adamola Falei, who had a decent impact last week too. One reception for a very big 17 yards. Yeah, that was not a good pass, but Fellaini went right after it, put his body out there and caught it as he dove for it, held on to it, did not let the football touch the ground. Nice catch by Fellaini. Trips to the far side for the boxers. Flag is thrown. It's going to be delay of game against the boxers at the end of the first quarter as time had run out. So now they're going to have a discussion on whether it was the end of the first quarter. Well, I'll tell you, that's the first Brockton penalty. And like you said, right at the end of the first quarter. So not a, not a bad job with the, um, with the penalty thing. They did a good job concentrating while they were out there in that first quarter. Around the clock. And the end of the first quarter. Seven to six Red Hawks on top of the boxers in one of the more interesting ends to a quarter we've seen in recent memory. Again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside big game Miles Jackson. Hi, it's off the turf here. In Metro West Natick High School, the last time we were here it was for a Lady Boxers soccer playoff game in which they were defeated in that effort. So, end of the first quarter. There's a bill currently being considered at the state level that would ban any reference to Native American terms or names in school, public school mascots. That's originally what led the Redmen to change the Redmen name to the Red Hawks. 
The Dar there's countless of them. Dartmouth Indians, North Quincy Red Raiders. Braintree. Braintree Wampanoags. They're all over the place, which begs the question for me, I am not necessarily against Native American names. My bigger concern is fumble as Johnny Horn picks it up. He's decked. The ball is still loose, and Natick's got it. Wow, that was, a, that was a big hit by the Natick defense. And the running back, the Horn, he got the, he got the ball back, but just as he's able to tuck it in, he got another big hit by the uh, Natick defense. So I'm not necessarily against the use of the Wampanoags or the Red Raiders or what have you. My bigger question is, should these schools need to get new turf for their football fields and new basketball courts and new uniforms for everything? Who pays for that? Because the public schools are in dire straits all over the Commonwealth right now and not everybody has the kind of money needed for a hundred thousand dollar new football field exactly. and new scoreboards all around he will uh Winodi did a nice job pursuing that play number 35 for the Brockton defense makes the tackle along with some assistance Second and ten for the Red Hawks. Four receiver set. Lederman back to pass. He lofts one up looking for Ferrochi and he's got it. Max Ferrucci for a gain of about 50 yards all the way down to the 24 yard line of the boxers. Yeah, that was a nice pass pattern by the receiver. He ran that excellent, kind of turned around our defender. Andy. And it's just a Andy. nice catch. And Andy was able to get away from the first defender. And luckily, there was another Brock defender down there to make the play. He needs to sit. We can't see the scoreboard. Now, a running play for the Red Hawks goes to nowhere. It'll be second and ten. Just shy of 10 minutes to go in the second quarter, seven to six. Yeah, because we need to see, he needs to see the scoreboard. So you need to slide him down if you want. Yeah, as long as he's seated, we're good. Two receivers split to each side and Lederman in the gun again. The lone running back is Geo Jesus. Lederman back to pass, he's gonna be hit. Spins off the hit. I'm not sure if the ball came out or what have you, but Lederman looked like he was looking around for a ball on the ground, but it was in his hand. He was holding that ball like a uh, loaf of bread. He had it out. He was lucky a Brockton defender didn't come up and knock that out of his hands. Dangerous play by the quarterback. Trips to the far side for the Red Hawks says. Litterman discards his hand towel. Litterman in the gun, receives the snap, drops back, and now keeps it himself, finds a hole right up the middle. Holding that ball dangerously out there for the taking, just dangling it in front of the boxer's defense. Yeah, that play looked like it was gonna develop a little bit more than what it actually gained. A quarterback draw. Lieberman knew he was going to take that ball upfield, but it did, didn't really, it, I tell you, the boxers did a nice job recovering, and he only gained a couple on the play. Big fourth down for the boxer defense. Four receivers, two split to each side. Lederman in the gun. It is fourth and 14. Lederman in trouble. He's going to be hit and sacked at the 40-yard line, and that's where the boxers offense will take over. Excellent work by the boxer, lineman number 50. That is Sonny Okinlola. Great job by Sonny Okinlola. Just manhandled his blocker, pushed him aside, and was able to just come down on the quarterback. Quarterback 
maybe took a few steps to the outside, but Okinola showed his little quick speed and got to him right away. Sonny Okinola, the starting senior linebacker, also the starting center on the boxer basketball team. Yeah, and he has, now he has the some great enthusiasm when he plays uh, football and basketball. Quick screen pass is complete along the far sideline. Gain of about three for, I believe that was Laguerre. Ted Tessa credited with the catch for the boxers. Laguerre in man coverage on the near sideline. That's the man to watch. Norman instead gives it to Williams. Derek Williams trying to turn the corner, lowers the head, gets the first down. And quick side note, lowering the head like that would be a 15-yard penalty in the NFL these days. Yeah, nice block by number 16, the wide receiver there, Isaiah. Laguerre. Laguerre. Thank you, Matt. He did a nice job, which enabled the uh, running back to get the uh, first down. This is a parasailer up above the field. Didn't want to pay the price of admission. Guess not. Williams again lowering the shoulder and just bucking Red Hawks off of him like a wild bull. That was a bruising, bruising run up the middle. And there was some native play, uh, defensive players that paid the price to trying to tackle him. I mean, this is going to be a first. I've never seen a parasailer above a high school football game before. I bet he had a nice view. And we're being told that there's usually another one with him. Wow. We'll keep our eyes out for him. Is he going to spin around and come back? That's the question. Two receivers to the near side. Pitch out to Williams trying to turn the corner. Lowers the shoulder again. That's going to be Derek Williams' finest asset as a running back. He is not afraid of dishing out a little punishment. Yeah, that time he got stopped right in his tracks. Nice play, I believe, by number 76 for the um, Natick defense. Big defensive lineman there. Josh Atwood again. Making his presence known. Five fifty to go and counting in the second quarter. It's seven to six Red Hawks. The boxers are marching. The pitch to Watterson. He's got a hole, lowers the shoulder, and has the first down. Yeah, nice, nice running by the uh, Brockton. I believe that was the receiver. Is that number 16? Yes, yes. Isaiah Laguerre. Isaiah Laguerre, nice run. Was, it, was patient, watched his blocks form, made the first down. All right, Miles, music history. What is the song that the Natick Marching Band just played? I know that song. Watterson bobbing and weaving his way for a gain of that's, about four um, yards. That's what's his name. He married Val Valerie Bertinelli. You're going to kick yourself when I tell you. I, I, I know that it's a three-man group. You got to Jump the, is the name of the song. Jump is the name of the song. No, not, what does it tell me? This person also played the guitar solo in the studio version of Beat It by Michael Jackson. That's right. What's the first letter? Never performed it live. V is the first letter. Yes. E is the first letter of his first name. Norman back to pass, throwing across his body. He's got his man. I think that's Laguerre. Wow. That was a nice play by the quarterback because he threw that. Uh, that's number the uh, receiver made his cut, or just as he made his cut. Sten Bruno, the punter, with the reception. Yeah, Norman with a nice, nice play right there. Eddie Van Halen. Eddie Van Halen. Yes. <laughs> who married Valerie Bertinelli. Yes, and not many people know that he is the one, if you listen to Beat It, only the studio version. Only the studio. He is the one who played the guitar solo. Wow. Never performed it live. 
Norman back to pass, looking long towards the near end zone. He's got Laguerre who's down at the two yard line. Yeah, Laguerre with a nice little down and out. And nice pass by uh, Norman. And Brockton with the quick offense, Matt. Nettick's gonna call a timeout here. Their third such of the first half. They have two remaining. Yeah, see, Bro Bro Colombo has seen a weakness in, in uh, Nadick's defense and is taking advantage of it. Now Nadick's defense has already ran off three timeouts with still uh, 343 left in this ball game, and their offense is going to get the ball back. Well, the defense has been very lackadaisical getting set up, and that's what was on display that forced them to call that timeout. So it's Norman under center, Laguerre, the lone wideout to the near sideline. The give to Atkinson, who I think is going to be called down at the one. Yeah, Brockton needs to punch this in here on the third down situation. They don't want to put pressure on themselves and trying to punch it in on fourth down. They need to take care of business right now. If there is the opportunity... Brockton could get a first down. It'd be very difficult to do that without getting a touchdown. You know, I didn't see the pylon over there, but you're absolutely there's right. about There's about a foot, give or take, between the first down marker and the pylon. Norman under center, quarterback keeper. He is pushed ahead across the line, nice. and that's a touchdown, Boxers. Nice. Nice play by the Boxers there. Just overpower them and punch it in the end zone. Gives Brockton back the lead, 12 to seven, 2.59 to go in the second quarter. Yeah, this extra point is important for the boxes. Also important for the psyche of our very good kicker, Harlan's Jean. The interesting thing about them, we have two marching bands here, Brockton and Natick. As the fake, number six has a alley to the end zone, but he's going to be run out of bounds. The two-point attempt is no good. Yeah, there was a miscue on the snap to the um, pl uh, placeholder, and he couldn't handle the um, snap, and that's where the miscue happened. Kicker never had a chance. And that almost guarantees on the next touchdown, Brockton goes for two. Yeah, very interesting how right now the, 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 the kicking game is... Off, uh, off kilter here with some miscues. So the Natick Marching Band opened this game by playing Rocky. I don't know if that was to get into the boxers' heads or not. No telling. Rocky's a very popular band song. And Rocky too was on uh, television last night. Perhaps one of the greatest fights in, in history. The slugfest that was Apollo Creed versus Rocky Balboa. Definitely the greatest fight in um, Hollywood history. I I might put Drago above that. I might put Drago above that. I might have to give the edge to Nate Expand here. They do have a cowbell. And a, and a bass player. And, and they have an actual electric bass That's pretty sitting cool. in with the marching band. High end over end kick taken at the 17. It's by Angel LeBron. LeBron up the near sideline and pushed out of bounds. Yeah, nice little speedy return right there. Wasted no time going up the left side of the field. And the kicker, Carlin Sheen, credited with the tackle on Mr. LeBron. Now we've got 2.52 left, Matt. How many timeouts does each team have in a half? Five total and a half. Natick has two remaining. There you go. First and ten at the 50-yard line. 
Brockton's defense has to play smart and aggressive. Lederman back to pass, short pass complete, complete to LeBron, who is pancaked by one of the linemen as well as one of the defensive backs. Well, I tell you who got a nice hit on him was Armando Walker Jr. Because the receiver ran right into him. Nice bear hug tackle. Four receiver set Litterman in the gun. Quarterback keeper as Litterman is taken down at the 35 yard line. Brockton seemingly demonstrating the bend but don't break strategy here. Yeah, that, that was a nice quarterback draw again. This time it resulted in a first down for the Natick um, Red Hawks. LeBron with the reception. Yeah, that was a nice move. It's gonna be good enough for a first down for the Red Hawks. Yeah, that's, that's what got him the first down. That was a nice little move. Juked on the defensive play and got, a, got the crowd to their feet. Quick second there. Almost broke it. Lederman again in the gun. Four receivers, two to each side. Lederman back to pass. Looking upfield, looking long, looking high, looking deep for Ferrucci. He's got it for a Red Hawk touchdown. Wow, he just beat his man there. Aaron Quite. And, but I tell you what made that play right there, that pass play, was Natick's offensive line gave their quarterback name in a lot of time. Great protection by um, the offensive line for Natick. Max Ferrucci is second reception for a touchdown today. And now uh, to attempt the extra point is Sam Waltzman. Waltzman's kick is up. And it's good. No good. No good. No good. Inches. Inches, Mad Dog. Inches left. Inches right. Inches right. Yes. It looked yeah. good from here. Inches. But flags are flags on the play. Offsides Brockton, so Natick will have a chance to re-kick this. Uh, that's a tough call right there. Brockton's defense is right in there. They almost blocked the uh, extra point. Well, there's a reason that they were called offsides. So Waltzman to attempt the extra point again. High snap is loose. Waltzman uh, catches it, and then he is absolutely decked by a host of boxers led by number 32. That, of course, is Aaron White. Yeah, that was a miscue, just like Brockton on the miscue on the extra point. So it's 13 to 12. Brockton now doesn't necessarily have to go for two on the next touchdown. I would expect them to anyway. Well, I tell you, they need a couple of big plays here. Get that ball down in Natick territory and put some pressure on this Natick defense. One thirty-three to go in the first half. Thirteen to twelve, Red Hawks on top of the boxers. Now it's Waltzman to kick off. It is Watterson. And Laguerre back to receive a squib kick by Waltzman. And one of the boxers just falling on it. Yeah, that took a while for somebody to fall on that ball for the boxers. Sten Bruno is the one who fell on it for the boxers. Tell you some interesting outfits here in the stands at Natick High School. I noticed that. So, 
some of the um, the girl student body is running around. They look like fairies from um, Who Whoville. I think I've seen a butterfly complete with wings and antennas. Norman back to pass. Throws across his body complete. And still churning. Still wow. churning all the way to the 48 and a half is number 87 of the boxers. That is Malik Kernan. Yeah, he did not want to go down. Carry and block um, defenders on his back. We got a fireman wearing a cape here. Interesting. And what doesn't get me about that one is that you'd think the cape would be flammable. So it doesn't make sense that a fireman is wearing a cape. It's a bold strategy. Norman back to pass, looking long towards the far side, complete to number 81, and that is Adamola Filet. That was a beautiful catch for a first down. Just made the first down. Nice play. 55 ticks to go and counting in the second quarter. Norman really airing it out on this drive. This one is intercepted by number nine of the Red Hawks who read it perfectly. Max Ferrucci is having himself quite the day here. Yeah, that wasn't a good pass. It was behind the receiver, but I tell you, give number nine credit. That was a great interception anticipation. Come up on the football and grab the interception. To kill that Brockton um, drive with uh, 42 seconds left on the clock. And the way Natick is playing, they got two timeouts. Hey, anything can happen right now because they're feeling pretty good about themselves on the offensive end. Forty-two seconds to go, 13-12. Natick on top of Brockton coming up with a big interception. That is the first interception of the year thrown by Michael Norman. Now Laterman back to pass. Rolling, 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 throwing across his body and into the Natick sideline. Yeah, smart play right there by Natick's quarterback. He had nobody open, pressure was on him. Nice job by Brockton's defense. Clock is stopped with 33 seconds to go in the second quarter. Natick, I wouldn't expect him to try to put a drive together, but I see a couple of Hail Marys in the near future. Four receivers, Lederman in the gun. One lone blocking running back. Lederman drops back. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be sacked behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 11. Yeah, nice pursuit by Okanola. Again, in there raising havoc in the backfield for the boxes. Tomo called by Brockton, you'd wonder why, with 21 seconds to go in the first half. Yeah, that's a good question. And the clock was going to continue to run as the ball did not find its way out of bounds or to the turf. Twenty-one seconds to go in the second quarter. Thirteen to twelve. Natick on top of Brockton. Brockton coming off a big win against the Lexington Minutemen. One that people saw the victory coming, but perhaps not in the manner that it did. Exactly. I was pleasantly surprised with the, all the firepower that came out of that Brockton offense, and the defense was stellar. But I really look for this Brockton offense to uh, come out in this second half and put a few more points up on the board. Looks like Nate's got five wide receivers. Third and 11, 21 seconds to go, and uh, timeout's going to be called. Yeah, I think Coach Colombo just wanted to see uh, brought, um, Natick's offensive setup. Not 100% sure that that's legal. I'm not sure you can call a timeout after a timeout. You're right. I think that answered that question. 
Third and 11 for the Red Hawks, so you five receiver set. They gotta watch Max Ferrucci in the slot position on the right side of the line. Lederman back to pass, he's in trouble. He's gonna end up keeping it himself. And going down at the 41 yard line, it'll be a fourth and five with 10 seconds to go. Timeout called by Brockton. Why is Brockton, why wouldn't they want the clock to just run out? Uh, interesting call. It just gives, uh, it's fourth down. I guess they want a chance for Natick to punt and uh, have Brockton uh, maybe run it back for a touchdown. That's the only logical reason. You've got uh, Watterson back there. He's electrifying. This one's going to be blocked. Ball is out. And Brockton's going to have a chance here with four seconds to launch one play. The guy to watch is going to be Isaiah Laguerre. That was great penetration by Brockton's defense right there to get into the uh, backfield and block that football. Michael Norman getting the marching orders from Coach Peter Colombo. And we're gonna see stacked wideouts. Looks like they, there's four of them. Adam Olafale, Ted Tessa on the far side. Now Williams splits out to the far side. The running back trips to the near side. Norman back to pass, he's in trouble. He throws it up and he's gonna be intercepted by number six of the Red Hawks, that is Aiden Hawley. And that is the way the first half will end. I'll tell you, that, that defensive backfield for Natick, they're really paying attention back there. Making Brockton earn their catches. Well, the first half comes to an end, 13 to 12, your score. Two interceptions thrown by Michael Norman. And the Boxer offense really has yet to find their groove, especially the running back that had 174 total yards and four touchdowns last week, Derek Williams the second. We'll look for him to get started in the second half. 13 to 12, your score at halftime. The Natick Red Hawks leading the Brockton Boxers. We're gonna step aside, take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize, you feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. Stay now, but if 
Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, football fans of all ages, welcome back into Natick High School for second half action between your Brockton Boxers and the Natick Redhawks. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, the one and the only big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, a profound victory over the Minutemen of Lexington High last week for the Boxers. Not having such luck getting started tonight. Brockton had scored the, f on four of their first five drives last week. This week, they're two of, what, five to a six? Including two interceptions thrown by Michael Norman. Natick with the lead right now, 13 to 12. They do kick off to the boxers to start this second half. Yeah, I think Natick just came to play a football game tonight. I think it's kind of surprised Brockton. I'm sure they'll uh, open it up in the second half. Good run back all the way to the 31 yard line for Isaiah Laguerre. The Red Hawks wearing their home all red jerseys, red pants, blue trim around the white numbers, the boxers in their brand new road white jerseys, black trim around the maroon numbers. That's right, last year they had um, black pants. Or the old jersey, the old uniform. Split receivers, eye formation for the boxers. The give to Derek Williams, charging ahead. Still on his feet all the way, a gain of about eight and a half yards. That was one run right there. Williams ready to play in this first half, in the second half. You can tell right off of that first carry. That was a punishing run like the days of Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon, yes. Back when I was a wee lad. Second and a long yard, we'll call it two for the boxers. They give to Williams, he's got a first down. At the 43 and a half. That looks like it was number 17. Watterson with the carry. He's back there in the backfield. Norman back to pass this time, looking long, looking deep. He's got his man, oh, and oh, just barely. Play right there. Deep as a man, put his hands right in there and took it out of uh, the receiver's hands. That was a great play. Intended for Isaiah Laguerre, who just couldn't hold on as the Red Hawk was drenched all over him. Yeah, that was a great play. Great pass. Great defensive play. Brings up second and ten. Second and ten for the Boxers. 9.48 to go in the third quarter. Looking to take a lead yet again. High formation, Laguerre the lone wide out to the far side. Norman pitches to Watterson. Watterson splitting up field, runs into his own man. Late flag thrown in behind the line of scrimmage. And flags after the fact from every direction. It'll be interesting to see there was one flag thrown initially. That would signal holding on the boxers because it came from the backfield, but multiple flags thrown in after the play had ended or was ending. So what's the greater of the two? I would assume it's an unsportsmanlike of some kind. <laughs> Natick backing up like it's gonna go against them. Yep, holding. It is holding against Brockton. Personal foul against Brockton. Well, Brockton can't let the emotions get the best of them. They've got to stay in their lane. 
concentrate and try to control this football game. So is this going to be a double penalty against the boxers? Because that could set them back 25 yards. Yeah, it looks like they were going back 25 yards. Yes, they're tacking on everything. So it's the holding running consecutively with the dead ball foul. Like prison sentences, is if it's concurrently, only the greater of the two would have, would have set him back 15 yards. Consecutive penalties set him back 25. If you can't do the crime, uh, can't do the time, don't commit the crime. It'll be... I don't know, second and the box is going to get to framing him to get a first down here. Yeah, they got to go into um, Natick territory to get a first. Trips to the far side, Norman back to pass, throwing to the near side and intended for Ted Tessa. It falls incomplete, so it'll be third in 10, 20, 34, 35. Yeah, Brockton's really put, put themselves in a hole. Early on in this third quarter with 9.32, 9.35 on the clock. Brockton's gonna go a third of the football field to get a first down here. It's a bold strategy, let's see how it pays off for him. Three, uh, two receivers rather split to each side. And now Watterson joins the receiving core on the near side. Is this one a little bit too long intended for number 81, Adamola Filet? That'll bring up fourth and 35. Watch out, Brockton could go for it here. You never know. Yeah, I, I doubt it, but I tell you, Brockton's defense is going to have to step up and make some plays and get this football back, maybe cause a turnover. They cannot let Natick take the ball back down the field. Sten Bruno back to punt. Excellent long kick. That'll get to the original first down marker. Takes a big Brockton bounce and loose. Ferrucci lost it, it's a pile up, mayhem, and Brockton oh. recovers the ball at the 35 yard line of Natick. Can you believe it, Miles? Big error by the punt returner to even get near that football. I don't understand why he got near it because there were Brockton defenders coming down with full head of steam to make a play, and they made the play. Special teams right there, nice job. David Belsius on the coverage downfield for the boxers, and can you talk about luck? That's Natick's first big mistake in this football game. Besides giving up that um, first play touchdown to the boxes early on in this football game. I'll tell you, whoever committed that dead ball foul was sighing in relief. Norman gives to Watterson. Watterson splitting out to the far side, trying to turn the corner. Falls forward for a gain of about six. Yeah, that was an interesting play there. One of the linemen, number 75 for Brockton, was pulling out to help out, but he kind of ran in front of the, ran right and almost ran over the uh, ball carrier. Number 17, Watterson. But a gain of five on the play. Give to a Johnny Horn, he's stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, solid defense right there on that run play. But like you said, it was stacked up right in the middle. Nowhere to go. One of the minute details from the last time we were here at Natick High School, you'd only remember this if you were watching the Lady Boxer soccer game very, very closely. There was a fan pacing back and forth with what looks like a wireless microphone. And he's doing play-by-play -play for himself. And he is still at it tonight. Oh 
They give to, I think that's an end around give to Isaiah Laguerre. Yeah, big play coming up for the boxes, fourth and short. Boxes need to execute and get this first down to continue this drive on a freebie by Natick's uh, special teams. It's like they're coming out in a tight, deep, tight offense. High formation, stack the box. Every man on the line for the boxers. Norman's gonna keep it himself and be pushed forward by Watterson and it looks like a Johnny Horn. Now the give to, or it's number 24, trying to turn the corner. Where's the ball spotted is gonna be the question. Yeah, it's just great pursuit by Nadix on the left side of that defense. Denilson De Silva on the carry and it is going to be marked shy of the first down. Yeah, Nadix stood tall on that defensive stand right there. Brock and could not get it around the corner there. Just good pursuit by Natick's defense on that left side. Some people in the crowd were calling for what would have equated to uh, give or take a 50 yard field goal attempt. Let's see if the ball, the ball was at the 30 give or take. Yeah, let's say about the 27. So it would have been a 45 yard field goal attempt. 10 yard end zone. The Mad Dog research team is in denial on this fact. If the ball was at the 35, you kick from the 40. And then there's a 10 yard end zone. So a 50 yard field goal attempt. Looks like May is going into a quick, quick offense. No huddle. 6-10 to go in the third quarter. Second and three to go for the Red Hawks. Four receivers, two split to each side. Lederman in the gun. The give to number two. That is Jalen Aponte. Yeah, third down and about four yards to go for uh, Natick. And they're in their quick, quick offense. No huddle. Brockton rushing, Lederman in trouble. He rolls out and he's sacked. It's gonna be fourth and about eight yards to go for the Red Hawks after yet another defensive stand by the boxers. Yeah, nice job by the boxers. They um, made the quarterback come out of a pocket and right away somebody was able to put a shoestring tackle on there and he went for a loss. So nice stance by the boxers. They need a big play right here. So now Sam Walton, Waltzman lining up to punt away. This one almost blocked too, a spiraling kick, bouncing at the 45, when it's taken at the 43, and a flag thrown in after the fact. Waterman, uh, Waterson rather, oh, I might go all the way, he's taken down at the five, but multiple flags thrown. There's laundry all over the place. Someone call the maid. She's got some work to do on the field. Yeah, that's a shame if it's on the boxes. Man, looks like that's going to come back. Electrifying run by Waterford. Illegal block in the back against the boxers and it is coming back. Yeah, that hurts right there. That hurts big time. Last week, seven penalties against the boxers for 50 yards and that's a big one. That takes away what would have been like a 60 yard run back. Yeah. Boxers gotta forget about it. Keep playing tough. Try to wear out this defense a little bit. They're really hanging tough, I'm surprised. Help! 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 
First and 10 from the 39 yard line for the boxers. Norman under center. Norman rolling out to the far side to pass, throwing across his oh. body. Oh, what a hit! Good hit. Incomplete pass, but the concern immediately, as that was intended for number 87. Yeah. Malik Kiernan. Yeah, perfect timing on the defensive hit. Tight end didn't even really have a chance to tuck it in. Once that ball was touched, it was contact. Knocked the ball loose. Ted Tessa to the near side, Laguerre to the far side, Norman under center. Watterson, the lone back. They give, or rather it's number 24. Yeah, he's wrapped up by big number 76. Denilson to Silva. And you gotta wonder, why are we seeing the committee of running backs that we saw last week that were so effective? Derek Williams, uh, Johnny Horn, among a couple of others. Big third down and 10 right here for the boxes. Four receivers trips to the near side as Laguerre in motion joins the near sideline. Low snap, Norman throwing quickly and it's complete and caught across the 50 all the way to the 46. For a first down, that's number 88, Navon Reed. Yeah, nice, nice pattern by Reed. Nice pass by the quarterback. Nice timing play. Big first down for the boxes. This base player is absolutely jamming. He's having a ball over there. Yes, he is. First and ten for the boxers, 46 yard line of Nidic. Norman in the gun. False start against the boxers. First and 15, Norman drops back to pass, high, deep. There's no way he caught that. And they're gonna rule incomplete. Almost a great catch, a little bit behind him. If he could have had that ball a little bit more in front of him, he might have brought that to the house. I think we might have a little band challenge here. The Natick band played the da 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 and now Brockton's band answering. So we might have a little band throwdown. Hold down. Little throwdown. I'll uh, drum line with Nick Cannon. Made it the 50 yard line for a drum line drum off. Low snap and quickly pitched out. Brockton's lucky Natick didn't come away with that one two and a half minutes ago in the third quarter. Do you call a timeout here? Do you, do you let this drive end and then take your offense aside on the sideline and say, get it together? No, you just keep going. You still two minutes left in this third quarter. Just the offensive line broke down there because a couple of Natick defenders was able to break through and get to the running back. And Colombo calls a timeout. Count it, and one for the Mad Dog. Timeout Brockton. In this, in this huddle on the Brockton sideline, I can tell you he's saying, get it together in many more words than that. To his offensive line, to his quarterback, to his running backs. Yeah, that last play was ugly. So, uh, good timeout, good call, man.
to something interesting going on in the Natick fan section. We'll try to figure it out. Norman back to pass. He's got time over the middle. I don't know. He was and it's going to fall like incomplete. He was all draped all over the Brockton defender, but no flag. Norman hasn't had it tonight. He's been throwing constantly behind receivers. And now in yet another bold strategy, the Natick Marching Band is playing the theme song of Brockton. Low snap. Excellent oh, recovery the is, there it is. That's gonna be a free first for running into the kicker who, he lost a shoe, I think, but he's limping. That's uh, Sten Bruno that was. Uh, Damn it. Running into the kicker, free first down for Brockton. It's a big break for the boxers. They needed that break. And it was fourth and 19, give or take. Personal fouls usually constitute an automatic first down, but that's also when there's less than 15 yards to go on the set of downs. Brockton's defense is coming out. They're picking up the flag. Oh, wow. That's terrible. That's a tough break for the boxes. No, Brockton, oh, Brockton declined the penalty. Declined the penalty. Okay, so he's expecting his defense to uh, do something down here deep in Natick's own territory. So instead of punting again, Brockton has chosen to pin the Red Hawks deep in their own territory. So what you're telling me, even though if the, the, the it would have it would have been fourth been, and five. Okay, all right, then that makes sense. And they would have had to punt again or go for sense. it at that point. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Coach Columbus call there. So it's at the two yard line and guaranteed the discussion on the Brockton sideline in that moment of confusion is get to the quarterback. Laterman hands off and Natick's back is brought down at the line of scrimmage. Might have fallen forward for a gain of a yard. Mondo Walker on the tackle. Brockton needs to hold right here and make uh, Natick punt deep in their own territory. Or even better, make up for the two uh, extra points that didn't convert and make Natick free kick from their own 40. Lederman rolling out to the far side, trying to turn the corner. He's brought out of bounds. Gain of maybe a yard or two. Devin Fortes pushing Lederman out of play. The big third down for the Boxers defense. They need to stand tall and get this ball back for their offense. Third and seven at the four yard line. Let's see Natick's got their offense spread out. Lederman quarterback carries hit. I think he makes it, does he make it? He's not close to the uh, first down marker, but he's yelling at the ref that his shoe popped off and there was a penalty that should have gone along with that, but he's off? mistaken. He just didn't tie his shoes tight enough. A nice, nice defensive hold right there by the boxes. 
It's fourth and one. You got to watch two things. A, do not, under any circumstances, jump off sides. And number two, it's fourth and a yard, yard and a half. Watch out for a fake. A direct snap to a running back that may line up near the kicker. Watch out for those two things. End of the third quarter, 13 to 12. Natick on top and a close one here in Metro West at Natick High School. The Red Hawks have been surprisingly hanging in with the boxers. The boxers thinking about their week off next week as Catholic Memorial dropped them from the schedule and Brockton has exactly five opponents that we know of remaining. It's BC High, Severian back to back, both of those at home. And then you got the big three swing, uh, New Bedford, Durfee, and then the three weeks of whatever they may be, playoffs, non-playoffs, whatever. And then Thanksgiving against Bridgewater Random this year at Marciano Stadium. So Brockton doesn't have a lot of time remaining on the gridiron this year. Not at and all. we're only a game and a half in. Not at all, but I tell you, that, this past third quarter was a defensive battle out there for both teams. Nobody gave up any points. No flags, the punt is low in a spiral. Falling at the 47 where it is taken by Watterson. Watterson turning upfield to the 40 all the way to the 35 of Natick. A decent, give or take, 20-ish yard return for Watterson. Yeah, now Fox has got great field position. They're on the um, Natick's 35 yard line. They need to produce right here early on in this, third, in this fourth quarter. Make a statement, get your defense out there to hold the uh, Natick offense. So Brockton, I think you're gonna score on this drive. I hope you're right. <laughs> this Natick, Natick defense has really surprised me this evening. Standing tall with this um, Brockton offense. High formation, no receivers, two backs. The give to Watterson, he finds a hole, lowers the shoulder, still on his feet before he's thrown down at the 25. Wow, he just dished out some offensive punishment right there to the defense. I tell you, I'm going old school again on you. He looked like Walter Payton for the Chicago Bears. Sweetness used to dish out punishment. Duh, Bears. All the time, Sweetness, Hall of Famer. Nice run by uh, Witherspoon. Watterson. Watterson, thank you. A bruising run by Watterson there. A name we didn't hear last week, so I'm kind of surprised with a bye week here that we were seeing him and we have an injured Red Hawk on the field. Quarterback. That's, that's the quarterback. Liederman plays offense and defense and uh... That's number 32. Oh, okay. I didn't see the three. Got a little excited there. It is a weird angle. Binoculars certainly help. I'm looking at his shoulder pads. Okay, there you go. It is number 32 for the Red Hawks. That's Felix Ferrucci. And he's getting worked on his right ankle. Yeah, that's going to be a loss for that um, for that um, native defense. End of the third quarter slash beginning of the fourth quarter. I want to thank our cameramen for tonight's festivities, bringing you the sights and sounds from Natick High School. About an hour drive away from Brockton, give or take traffic. The one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons. Yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Yes, indeed. High formation for the boxers, no receivers. They give to Watterson, right up the gut, still on his feet. He's going to find the end zone. Amik Watterson all the way to the house to give the boxers the lead yet again. Great play call right there. Great offensive line to open it up right in the middle for Watterson. He saw the opening. Nothing cute. It. Nothing cute. No juking, no dancing, no spinning. Right up the gut. That was just a uh, basic power play right there. 
rocking, overpowering this Natick defense, and I think that that defensive line is getting a little soft in there. They've been hanging tough, but this Brockton offensive line is big, and they're starting to wear down that defense a little bit, just a little bit. That brings us to 18 to 13 with 10.24 to go in the fourth. Still a lot of time. Brockton needs to convert on this uh, two-point play. Two point play. They are indeed going for two. Watterson in the backfield. Niv on Reed, the lone wideout. It goes towards him, and he walks in. Two points is good for the boxers. Yeah, nice job with uh, Kernan to hold on to that football in the end zone. That puts Brockton up seven points. Big, big drive right there for the boxers. They took advantage and punched it in. Now, you know the defense is fired up now. Nadek has a tall order to try and bring this ball back down the field and counter with a score. A, score the a very tall order. Taking a score on this drive. I'm being told by the Mad Dog research team that I called the boxers need to score on that drive. And they did. Okay, I'll take it. Another swish. I feel like Ray Allen in 2008. I'm just sinking them one after the other. I'm going for the record. Brockton took advantage of number 32 being out. He's a key linebacker, I believe, in there. And they just ran it right up, you said, right, right up the gut. Carlin's Gene lining up to kick it away. Ferrucci and LeBron lined up to receive for the Red Hawks. Low end over end bouncing and it's taken by LeBron. Cutting out to the near sideline, he's got a lane. Carlin Sheen, the only man, and LeBron all the way up the sideline, lowering the shoulder, falling forward at the 30 yard line. And an excellent return for Angel LeBron of the Red Hawks to set the Red Hawks up to answer the latest boxer touchdown. Yeah, what happened right there, the boxer kickoff team went straight, everybody went in the middle. The outside people did not stay in their lanes, and the kick returner kind of found, saw that, all bunched up in the middle, just bounced to the outside, used his speed, and made a big play for his um, team. All right, Miles, let's try it again. Name the singer of this song and, and the song. Yeah. It was Jump Again oh. by Eddie Van Halen. Four receivers set two to each side and Peterman, uh, Lederman, excuse me, in the backfield, dropping back to pass, throwing complete to the nearest sideline. Yeah, good pocket protection right there by uh, Nadine's offensive line. Nick Ophadile on the reception. Boxers couldn't get in there to disrupt the play. Laterman in the shotgun. LeBron, the man in motion, he gets the end around handoff and he is decked immediately by number 58, Amando Walker Jr. Yeah, nice job by Jr. Walker Jr. right there on the play. Big third down coming up for the uh, Red Red Hawks. This is Despacito. The favorite song of Mike the Postman's five-year-old daughter, Munchkin. It's going to be a flag on the play for unnecessary roughness, but that was 100% incidental. I, I don't see They're going to say hitting a defenseless that. receiver, but that, that's incidental. I, I don't get that. That's incidental. 
any day of the week. And that's going to give the uh, Red Hawks a first down. Well, and more importantly, 15 yards closer to the end zone. That's a killer right there. Angel LeBron is the player that uh, turned into an entree at IHOP. That's incidental, any day of the week. Not a good call right there. That was a break for Natick. Nine yard line, a spot. First and goal for the Red Hawks. First down marker. Ball at the 13, so first and 10 for the Red Hawks, not first and goal, and they can get a first down without getting a touchdown. That's incidental contact any day. Lederman on the keeper brought down by a Committee of the defensive line for Brockton. Yeah, nothing there for the quarterback. In the first half, that play worked. Felix Ferrucci, who is listed as a quarterback and defensive back, still down on the sideline. He injured that ankle on the last boxer drive. Trips to the far side, a lone wide out to the near side. Lederman in the gun, flanked by a Ponte, flags thrown. False start to back the Red Hawks up to the 18 yard line now. Nice break for the boxes there. Lederman back to pass, throwing over the head of number 37, it looks like. Uh, 21, Colin Gilani. Yeah, the receiver had no chance to catch that football. There's too much mustard on it and a little bit too high. And a sign of things to come, there's a couple of Red Hawks on the sideline practicing long snapping and placing balls for place kickers. I've seen kickers practice into a net, but I've never seen this, the long snappers practice. Lederman back to pass, throwing over the middle and nobody home for the Red Hawks. It's gonna be fourth and 15. Good defensive stand for the boxers. Yeah, they got one more down here. The hole, the fourth. You gotta go for it, the way the yeah, boxers can bleed time mean. off the clock. Yeah, they're going for it. Boxers just have to play smart, stay in their lane, don't make, don't do anything stupid as far as to have a flag thrown on you. Timeout, Red Hawks with 7.51 to go in the fourth quarter. And the Red Hawks know that this is a golden opportunity to try to get something going here for their team. Like you said, 7.51, not a lot of time. Especially going up against this boxer team. So they must try to capitalize. Someone lost a set of car keys. They said, if you can identify the car and where the keys were found, the car is yours. So I, I just turned around and said, Show me a Mercedes-Benz E-Class leather interior, keys found at the concession stand. Is that what it is, Mercedes? No luck. So I don't want a free car tonight. All is fair, four receivers set for the Red Hawks, Lederman and the shotgun. 
Defense needs to put some pressure on that quarterback. Ball is out, Lederman picks it up, now in trouble, throwing it. Oh, what a grab! What a grab by number five, Nick Ophidel. And that's a touchdown for the Red Hawks. You could see that catch. The way he stood on his tiptoes on the line and just hauled it in. That was pro concentration right there by the wide receiver and, and a great effort for the quarterback. He fumbled the football on the snap, stayed in his lane, stayed his head composure. Since no boxer on him. Yeah. No boxer on him. Blown coverage. And, and had some um, pressure on him. Escaped the pressure and was able to get it down there. A nice catch in the end zone. The kick is up. And the kick is good. We're all tied up with 7.40 to go in the fourth quarter. Just really that touchdown fires up this uh, native crowd here. All right, Miles, give me the song title of this one and the artist. And I know the song. My Sharona. I can't remember who, who did the team, who did the song. My Sharona. He can do those kind of songs when you have a bassist sitting in. No sign of our parasailer. I don't think he'd be flying in here in the evening. <laughs> Watterson Laguerre back to receive for the boxers. Gonna be kicked away by Sam Waltzman. I would think you squib it to give the boxers a chance to uh, score and the Red Hawks a chance to answer. If you can't get long, the boxers have that many more first downs they can get while bleeding the clock. Laguerre has it for Brockton. Now losing his balance and still on his feet and finally brought down at the 25. So Brockton's got 75 yards to play with to bleed as much time off the clock as they can and at the very least, attempt a field goal. Yep, Brockton needs to be on their A game right now for offense. March, march the ball down the field, use up the clock, and put some points on the board. First and 10 for the boxers from their own 27. I know that's cool in the game, celebration. The band was playing during a play, which breaks MIAA rules. Ah. And if the refs cared enough, they could flag Natick for a 15-yard penalty. Right. Just saying. It's the second time they've done it tonight. Eye formation, power back for the boxers. Pitch out to number 24, who heads towards the sideline. That is... Denilson De Silva on the carry. Native with a nice job on that particular play right there. Keeping the boxes from getting it close to the first down. They look like they still got about four to four yards to go. I'm officially confused. The Natick Marching Band is playing Havana Gila, a Jewish folk song. 
reaching forward and not getting close to the first down marker is De Silva, so it'll be fourth and about four yards, 545 and counting. Uh, we're just very lucky that the Natick Marching Band did not perform a halftime show because the teams might have come on, the marching band might have refused to yield. Mike got the American Pie reference. Sten Bruno back to punt. A high kick, a spiraling knuckleball, and touchdown at the 34-ish yard line. We'll see if the boxers' defense is up to the challenge to hold this Natick offense again one more time so their offense can get that football back. Minus a few plays, the defense hasn't been an issue tonight. Number 53 being worked on on the sideline. That's Garrett Bean. And the band's going to play during another play. At some point, you're going to throw the flag. Quarterback keeper. And Lederman on the carry, getting a couple of yards. Four receivers set, Lederman in the backfield in the shotgun flanked by the lone back, but he's going to throw complete to LeBron, who was injured on the pancake hit a few drives ago, and he gets all the way to the 50-yard line. Yeah, nice job of him slipping through the defensive backs to get that first down. He's got quick feet. First and 10 from the 50. Uh, Ponte on the carry. A nice run there by Natick, number four. Kind of a bruising running back. He's got some weight on him. He must be the fullback. Second and two for the Red Hawks. Four receivers set. Ponte the lone back. Lederman in the shotgun. Low snap handled. And Lederman's in trouble. Spinning off the initial hit. And now charging it. He's got a first down and more. Cutting back. And getting all the way down to about the 32-ish yard line. And it's good for a first down. I tell you, you can't get no cooler than that in the pocket. You fumbled the football. Still keep your composure, pick it up. Run to the side, outrun the defense, and get big yardage into uh, Brockton territory. All right, we've now heard jump by Van Halen three times. You've got to wonder how many more times they'll play it, especially during plays. LeBron on the carry, charging ahead for a few yards. Natick's offensive line really stepping up here late in this uh, ball game. Giving Brock and everything they can handle. Now an interesting formation, two backs in no particular order. Lederman dropping back to pass, high and deep. Yeah. Almost intercepted by the boxer defensive back. Intended for Max Ferrucci. Yeah, nice job by Fortes, Devin Fortes back there covering. He almost jumped a little bit too early, but he was able to keep his eye on that football and knock it out of the defender's hand. Brings up about a third and seven for the Red Hawks. Big third down here for the boxer defense. You're in that gray area, too long to kick a field goal. 
too short to punt. Same formation, three receivers, two to the far side, two running backs flanking Lederman, who's in the gun. It's Aponte and LeBron. The quarterback keeper goes absolutely nowhere and sacked as Lederman. Yeah, that did not fool the Brockton defense. It's number 58, Armando Walker Jr. on the sack. Yeah, ball's on the 31-yard line, so there's a timeout by Natick. Excuse me, by Brockton. And it's good. It's fourth and about 12 for the Red Hawks, 2.40 to go. So Brockton makes a stand here, and who the heck knows what happens. Yeah, that's a good timeout by Coach Colombo. Get his defense over to the side. Make sure everybody's on the same page. Know who you're covering. Know where your um, lineman is going. And watch the quarterback. Whoever's assigned the quarterback, watch him. All right, so we're hearing Rocky now from the Brockton marching band. A, how many times have we heard the Rocky theme song tonight? And B, who did it better? It's like a Rocky battle, but you know who did it better. You know. I'm a fair, air quote, fair and objective commentator, end quote. All right, now let's get a Rocky battle going. I want to hear both bands line up on the 50 and both play Rocky at the same time. Trips to the far side, Litterman in the shotgun, flanked by a Ponte. Brockton's rush getting through the offensive line and Litterman's on the run and he's going to throw it away and Brockton will take over on downs. And that was... And that was great pursuit by the Brockton's defense and great composure not to get over aggressive and hit that quarterback as he's going out of bounds because you know they would have threw the flag and that would have kept the uh, drive going. So nice job by the defense to stay in their lanes and keep their composure. I'll tell you, great composure. Mike the Postman Simmons on the fly switching out a battery to bring the viewers of Brockton the last two and a half minutes. This man's awesome. High formation. Three receivers set. The pitch out, I think that's a Johnny Horn who has a first down and still plugging away. Yeah, Brockton's gonna go in a no huddle offense. Put some pressure on his defense. 221. And counting, Brockton will have one more play before the two minute warning. Unless they move fast. The give to Watterson, or Laguerre. It's second in the long four. Is there no two minute warning? It's not. Brockton's using the outside, especially that left side of the offensive line to uh, clear an opening and, and they're, they're uh, eating up chunks of yardage. First down with uh, buck 46 to go, 20 to 20, Brockton marching. You just gotta get to like the 25 yard line and Carlin's Gene, I'm more than confident, can put up a long field goal. You know, the way this game's been going, Matt, I'd, I'd like to see him punch it in for six points. Just to- Well, uh, that, is, that is preferable. Yes, but that, is, that is preferable. I wanna see you punch him in. Norman back to pass along the near sideline, complete to Ted Tessa. That was a nice pump fake by the quarterback. Pumped it, froze the defense, then found his open man, number four, over there. So Brockton's marching the New England Patriots two minute drill. The pitch out. That's uh, Johnny Horn. And he picks up a first down for the Boxers. 128 to go. The Boxers knocking. I tell you what, that was a crushing block. I, can't, I didn't see the number of the Boxer who did it. That was a beautiful block to break the uh, running back free. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. 
The Natick fans shaking in their boots. Is Brockton threatening? Norman back to pass. He's got his man and he underthrew him again. Threw it behind the receiver for like the sixth or seventh time tonight. Yeah, he hasn't been on on those, those slant plays. You've got to lead the receiver on a slant play. I say you run it to the outside. You've been been pretty um, right on that play, so run it to the outside until it doesn't work anymore. Where's Williams? He had four touchdowns on a buck seventy-four last week. Good question. Where is he? Atkinson and Watterson in the backfield behind Norman, who's under center. Clean receivers uh, give to Watterson, and the ball's out. Who's got it? Netta calling for it. No sign yet as they separate the carnage. And Neda comes away with it, a buck 16. And the miscues continue for the Brockton Boxers. Tough break right there. Good ball hawking by the Natick defense. Somehow was able to pull it out of his arms. Gio De Jesus, the, the junior, uh, senior captain, excuse me, Forcing that one out. Only one word can describe that for Brockton. Catastrophic. Yeah. Brockton's defense has to be careful. Natick's offense is very dangerous. Right now they're on a high. They've got the momentum. They've got to be careful. And Natick's been successful in the passing game tonight. I'd drop back a couple of extra safeties. Lederman in the gun, four receivers set. Aponte the lone running back. Lederman back to pass, throwing long, throwing deep. And over the head of number five, Nick Ofidal. Yeah, and he had his man beat by a step. Name of this song, ninth in the 60s, horse. Late 60s. They didn't play enough of it. No. Same formation for the Red Hawks. Lederman dropping back. Now keeping it himself and sacked. A big stop for the boxers. That'll bring up a third and about 12. An immediate timeout called. One minute left. This is becoming a, a, a in, nail biter. In regulation. Yes. Keep in mind, I did not say the O word. I said in regulation. seconds to go. We're all knotted up 20 to 20. Lederman back to pass. And flags thrown. Who jumped? Brockton sideline cheering. It's going to be false start against the Red Hawks. Big play for the boxes right there. Big penalty. That makes it third and about 20. Hey, boxes out. Just got to play smart. They will get the ball back. Four receivers, Lederman back to pass. He rolls out, he's in trouble, and he gets hit behind the line all the way at the 10-yard line. It's gonna be fourth and a lot. And a timeout immediately called by Brockton. Yeah, nice job by 35, Winodi with the pursuit on the, on the quarterback. So now back to punt are the Red Hawks standing 
in his own end zone is Sam Waltzman. If you're Natick, you're just hoping for a clean snap and clean kick here. You cannot afford a mistake this deep in your own field. Clean snap Block. and blocked. Who's got it? It's going to be a safety as Waltzman picked it up and was brought down in his end zone. Brockton takes a two-point lead with 43 seconds to go. Yeah, that was number two for the boxers who got in there and fell on the ball. Belsius has been all over the place defensively tonight. He's had a couple of big atmosphere-setting hits, and this is the latest example of his contribution to the Brockton Boxers defense. Getting behind the line, Waltzman took a very long time to try to kick that one away. Pelsius found himself in the promised land. Waltzman picked it up off of the uh, the rebound off of Belsius' arms and by then it was too late. There was a swarm of boxers and nowhere to go for Waltzman. But okay, this game has been about the special teams. We've seen everything. We've seen it all tonight. Big special teams play by there for the box. They, they made penetration and took advantage and blocked that punt. But the big thing here is Natick now has to free kick it, not a place kick. So it'll be a short kick. And the boxers will have the ball. And the, and the boxers have the ball with 43 seconds to go. So if, if it's clean and not a, an onside-ish attempt, Brockton takes a knee and that's game. And they escape with a narrow... Right. Narrow two point victory. You said the key word, Mad Dog. Escape out of enemy territory and hopefully come out of here with a win. I don't know why they're place kicking it here. But it's, it, it is from the 20 yard line, so it's fairly deep back of where it would be normally at the 40. Waltzman with the squib. Brockton touch it, but it's going to go out of bounds. 38 seconds on the clock, flags fly. So the refs say that Brockton didn't touch it before it went out. Brockton, Brockton could opt for a re-kick or they could just take it. I think they'll just take it. Yeah, they're smart. They'll just go ahead and take the football right there and run out the clock. Although the refs don't look like they're giving Brockton an option. I just noticed this native crowd is stunned. It started off so strong for the Red Hawks and when it was 13 to 12, Natick looked like they might have a shot at this thing. And then the miscues started and ultimately it's gonna be the safety forced by Belsius on the blocked punt attempt. That is the difference in this game. It's 22 to 20. Brockton should just take a knee here. Yeah, definitely so. They got, they can probably two more downs, just take a knee. So Miles, we've seen two drastically different boxers teams in two drastically different games. Last year, 420 total yards, 311 on the ground, 109 through the year. Tonight, we're nowhere close to that. 42 points put up last week. Nowhere close to that tonight. 42 points between the teams tonight. The great thing about this game, it was close as a hard fought battle, and Brockton kept their composure and is going to get out of here with a, with a win. Norman on their quarterback, keeper. Natick's going to call an immediate timeout. They think they might have a chance at a defensive stop and forcing one here. Unfortunately, Why not? Unfortunately, the clock is against them. And Brockton still has three downs. Well, two more downs. Natick does have two timeouts, so they theoretically could force a fourth down with a stop clock. I tell you right now, it ain't happening, Mark. Oh, Whether it's likely or not, that's yet to be determined. Norman under center, no receivers. Quarterback keeper pushed ahead. Brockton gets a first down. This thing is over. It'll be third and about two. And another immediate timeout by the Red Hawks. 
26 seconds to go, and Brockton hanging on by two points. Third and a yard. Again, I want to thank our cameraman for bringing you the sights and sounds from Metro West. Natick High School, the one and the only Mike, the Postman Simmons, yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Special delivery at that. Special delivery. Postman always delivers. Always. And twice on Sundays. Brockton gets a yard, this thing's over, we go home. If they don't, it'll be fourth and half a yard and Norman charging across the line of scrimmage. Has the first down and that will send us back home. I think Natick called the timeout just because they had one. That has to be it, I mean, because they had one. There's no other reason. They are not getting the ball back. I think they're just hoping for a fumble here. 15 seconds. Oh, is it timeout to, to move the chains? Well, if they're all timeouts, now Brock can take a knee and the clock runs out. There's 10 seconds left and it's a 40 second play clock. So Brockton's just gonna let this thing expire. Four, three, two, and one. This game is over. The word of the game, escape. Brockton escaped Natick High School with a narrow two point victory. What changed between the two weeks uh, last week and tonight will be a lot of discussion. Brockton has two weeks to think about it before BC High comes south to Marciano Stadium. And then Severian back to back, a tough two game swing for the boxers, but they've got two weeks to game plan. I think the difference between this week and last week, this Natick team came to play tonight. And they showed it out there, gave Brockton the scale, but Brockton stayed focused, made the big plays when they had to, and come out of here with a victory. The big scare for me, Miles, where are the two running backs, a Johnny Horn and Derek Williams the second? Williams himself went for 174, four touchdowns last week. He had two carries tonight. That's it. Is he hurt? Is, are they saving him for the Catholic Conference? What's up with him? What's up with Isaiah Laguerre, who only had two or three receptions tonight? All were short. The Boxers' offensive game needs to pull it together if they want a shot at beating BC High Severian. The defense was excellent tonight, but the offensive game is what needs to be worked on in the next two weeks. Yeah, definitely needs to be worked out. But again, I have to give Natick defense a lot of credit. They hung in there all four quarters. I thought Brockton would have worn down by the end of the third quarter. But um, Natick did a gut check and hung in there with the big boy from Brockton. We haven't seen a quarterback that's aired out quite as much as uh, 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 William Lederman. The Natick offense had a bunch of uh, scary thoughts tonight for the Brockton defense. They almost came away with a couple of big shots. Yeah, I mean, uh, Brockton defense was put to the test today, and they passed, um, but the um, Brock and Natick defense really came to play. There's only one player of the game. It's going to be David Belsius forcing the safety at the end of the game with the blocked punt. A couple of big tackles, a couple of high-impact tackles that ultimately hurt the Natick Redhawks. Belsius, player of the game. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, actually, I, I give it to the special teams. They, they all deserve They all got in their penetration. The special teams definitely, for me, is the um, player of the game. From Natick High School, the final score, 22 to 20. The Brockton Boxers narrowly escaping with a safety victory over the Natick Redhawks. They move to 2-0 on the year. They have a bye week next week, and then they're... Uh, facing BC High and Severian back to back at Marciano Stadium. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. 22 20, your final score tonight from Natick High School. Brockton escaping Natick with the victory. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman, Mike the Postman Simmons, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.